A friend of mine Daya, fake name, asked me if I wanted to come with her on some errands and see her new car. I said yes because I had some things to get done and my car was being checked over. We were in the same bubble and stayed masked the whole time. Well while we were out Daya ended up hitting another car while turning left. We were both shaken but mostly fine yet but when I started to call the police Daya started freaking out even more. She started begging me not to call the cops and to just go talk to the other driver. I didn't feel comfortable not calling them so I went ahead and did. Then Daya started begging me to get in the driver's seat, saying I had to get in the driver's seat, I had to claim I was the one driving. Turns out Daya doesn't have a license. She needed slash wanted a car but didn't feel like getting her license so her mom bought the car for her. I didn't feel comfortable lying to the police so I continued to refuse and just got out of the car and waited on the sidewalk for them to get there. Well Daya got arrested for driving without a license, insurance, or registration for her car and just told me today she has been found at fault for the accident. Now Daya, her mom, and half of our friends are saying I'm an idiot for not just switching places. She is now facing multiple fines, possible jail time, and being kicked out of our MA program because of all this. I tried to explain that I didn't feel comfortable lying to the police but she just keeps calling me a privileged idiot and wishing horrible things would happen to me. So am I the idiot for not switching places with her? Edit, several people have said I should include this and I'm sorry I didn't in the original post. This was much more serious than a fender bender. This was my response to someone else, she took the entire front of his car off or at least it looked like it. We were at an intersection and she was in a left turn lane with a yellow light and didn't look before she went. The other gentleman was coming the opposite way going straight. Both cars are totaled. The gentleman was not unconscious as I originally thought but he did hit his head on the steering wheel and he had to be taken to the hospital. He did eventually get out of his car with help and that's when I believe I should have talked to him. Daya and I were mostly alright with just some bumps and bruises. Not the idiot. If you had lied and it came to light at any point, you would be charged for a lot of things and would get in trouble financially and legally. Also it's not about privilege since apparently your friend could afford a license, she just didn't feel like it. Well maybe if she had, she wouldn't have hit the other car because she would have learned how to drive with a proper instructor. Looks like it's the consequences of her own actions. She should have thought of all that before doing something both illegal and extremely dangerous. There's a reason people learn how to drive, it's not as easy as it looks on the outside. No friend would ask you to take the blame. Her mother and friends don't get a vote, block them all. You would have been opening yourself up to many charges if you lied to the police and your future would have been destroyed instead of hers. She's no friend to you. I'm quite sure the other driver would have noticed who was driving and you would have been caught right away. Daya's mother is a fool for getting her a car knowing she didn't have a license or insurance. These are not good people. You did an honorable thing. She messed up by not getting the bare minimum for being able to drive, this was bound to happen. Was she expecting to just drive around all year without a license? She is responsible for the consequences, and she, and her mother, should know better. They can be mad, but at the end of the day, you were truthful to yourself, the police, and everyone involved. I, 27, have been with my boyfriend, 25, since I was 17 and he was 16. Since I met him he's loved to cook and bake. Since we were both broke teens saving for uni, at all of our early anniversaries he used to cook dinner for us and bake dessert. When we got a house together last year one of the things he really wanted was a big kitchen. And that became one of our non-negotiable while house hunting. Also he's really close with his dad. His dad was the one who taught him how to cook. Over the past 9 months his dad has gotten pretty ill and he's been going to see him often. And one of the things they decided to do was to cook every dish they knew, over the course of months, takes pictures of each dish with one of those Polaroid slash Instax style cameras and make a recipe book. Most of these were just generic dishes they made together, some with personal twists, but a few of them were dishes either his dad had made up or that they had made up together. His dad also wrote personal notes to my BF on each of the photos. Needless to say this recipe book is very important to him and became even more special when his dad passed last month. When this happened I was ready to give him time to grieve, start picking up more chores and take over cooking, thinking he would want a break. But instead he started cooking and baking like crazy, he ended up cooking almost every recipe. I guess it was just his way of mourning his father. Over the past week he's been getting better, 
talking about his feelings more and such. Yesterday my brother, his wife, their two children, three, five, and his MIL came over and my boyfriend had made lunch and dessert. My brother's kids loved it. So my SIL asked what it was called. My BF explained that they were unique recipes that belonged to his dad and then my SIL asked if she could have them. My BF said no, but that he was willing to make the dishes for her kids regularly. Her mother then chimed in and told my BF that that wouldn't do and that he shouldn't be selfish and share the recipes with the children. My BF clearly got uncomfortable so I got in between them and told them if they are going to be disrespectful to him then he will have to leave. They started saying I was being over dramatic and that they were just recipes. I told them that they had sentimental meaning and that if he didn't want to give them to them he didn't have to. They left with a huff. I later got a text from my brother asking what happened because what his wife and MIL were telling him didn't add up. I told him and he apologized for their action. However, I got some messages from my sill saying how her kids won't eat their food anymore and only want to eat the recipes and how I'm being cruel and starving two young children. I've just ignored them, but I have something gnawing at me telling me that I should have handled it differently and that I'm the idiot. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot. There are many reasons why people might not want to share recipes, and they are all valid. She is not entitled to something just because she wants it. If you haven't already done so, make a copy of the recipes for the kitchen and store the original in a fireproof safe. I would not put it past them to try to snoop and make copies. Bonus points if you all make changes to the decoy recipes so they taste horrible. For people who use cooking slash baking as their form of therapy it's like reading their diary. Recipes are personal, slowly taking the time to tweak and customize a generic recipe to your taste, let alone with his deceased father, is personal. You can find any chicken noodle soup recipe but each culture and household has their way of making it. Your SIL is an entitled idiot. If her kids won't eat her cooking she should take a class or look some up online. It's 2022 you can literally find the basic version of any dish online. Not the idiot. First of all, what an absolutely lovely idea that your BF and his father came up with to share their joint passion. It will obviously be something he cherishes forever and can share with his future children if you decide to have a family. Your SIL is engaging in emotional manipulation and you should ignore all communication from her regarding this. Your BF literally offered to make her children the dishes they love and that wasn't good enough for her. Her children are not going hungry, children will eat if they are hungry. She is a huge idiot for not understanding how important these recipes are to him, especially when his father died only recently. So I, 14, have lived with my brother, Max, 29, for 8 years. I moved in with him after my mom died. Originally, my dad, 50, was supposed to take me in, but he couldn't because he had a new family and didn't want me staining his perfect life. When I was 11, he reached out to me over Facebook and started forming a relationship with me. Long story short, I cut him off after I found out his reasoning. His daughter, my half-sister, Ella, 9, needed a kidney transplant. Apparently, I was now my father's hero and greatest treasure. I don't know the full story, but I do know that Ella did end up getting a transplant and survived. My dad reached out a few more times over the years, mainly to scold me for not trying to be in his life or accepting him as my father and his wife as my mom. Anyway, about four months ago, I got a call from my dad's wife Lola, telling me that my dad had passed away and how I needed to be at the funeral, which happened yesterday. I didn't go. As cruel as I may sound, I feel no love for my dad, he was never there for me and has proved over and over that he's never had a want, need or reason to be in my life. To me, he's a sperm donor. I do feel guilty for this, as he's my dad and I'm supposed to love him, but the truth is that I don't. So this morning, I got another call from Lola telling me I'm an awful daughter and my dad never deserved what I'd done to him. She said her and Ella would never forget this and that I'm a pathetic excuse for a daughter. She also insulted Max, calling him a bad influence, a child, and an enabler. I responded by saying that if my pathetic excuse of a father couldn't be bothered to be in my life, I would not be involved in his. I told her that my father may be physically dead now, but to me he always has been, and she has no right to come at me for any choice I make as she's not my mother. Then I hung up. Since then, my dad's family and Lola's have been calling and texting me about it all, and I'm so overwhelmed. Max says I did the right thing but I don't know. I yelled at a grieving woman who just lost her husband and I feel terrible. 
Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. He only contacted you when he needed something for his other daughter. Not even because he was interested in you and your life and wanted to actually be a father. You told Lola the truth. People tend to dislike the truth if it isn't in their favor. You could send out a mass text telling them that you were not present at his funeral simply because he wasn't present in your life, only when it could benefit him and his other family. Tell him what you told Lola. Tell them that if they really wanted you present at his funeral then they should have kicked his behind years ago and told him then to be a decent father. You don't owe anyone your presence at his funeral and as you said he wasn't there for you until he ended up needing something from you, which was downright disrespectful especially considering he refused to step up and parent you when your mother passed away, as you said he wasn't anything to you other than a donor. As for his wife, parents and anyone else in his family who abuse you, ask them all where were they and why didn't they step up for you when your mother died? Then calmly and firmly tell them that they aren't your family as they made that crystal clear and that they are just as bad as he was and you don't have any room in your life for them or their crap and if they don't stop the harassment of you then you will report them to the police. You owe him, Lola and Ella nothing. He rejected you because in his words you'd stain his perfect family. Max has done more for you than your father ever has, and did so at a young age. Funerals are for the living to process the loss of someone close to them and you lost your father in a very real sense a long time ago. The only thing I can think of that would be gained by you going is that Ella had complications that needed a suitable donor for in the near future, or there was a legal thing you stood in the way of Lola getting. I decided to keep my pregnancy to myself because I don't know what I'm going to do about it and I knew my fiancé wasn't going to be happy with the news. My future sister-in-law and best friend is the only other person who knew as I only took the test at her suggestion and at her house. She also agreed that her brother was unlikely to be happy about it but she felt like I should tell him immediately anyway. We kept arguing over it because I told her I needed time to process it and she felt like I was making excuses to avoid telling him. In the end, she told him herself while we were having dinner with their family. He was so upset he confronted me in front of everybody so now they all know and everybody is upset with me for keeping it from him. His sister kept trying to reach out and apologize after it happened but I was ignoring her as her only excuse was that he was her brother so she couldn't keep it from him and that she gave me three weeks to tell him myself. The last time she called me I was so upset that I answered and yelled at her. In the heat of the moment, I uninvited her from the wedding and told her I would find a new bridesmaid. I've given my fiancé and his family another reason to be upset with me but I've refused to let her come to the wedding even as a regular guest despite them asking me to and it being important to them for her to attend. Am I the idiot? This is a mess. Everyone's the idiot here. Listen, if you can't even tell your fiancé you are pregnant for weeks you have no business getting married. Keeping secrets this early? Especially out of fear that he will react poorly? That does not bode well for a future happy relationship. Sure it's terrible that your best friend told your secret, but it was her own brother that you were keeping a secret from. Your fiancé is an idiot for making a scene in front of a bunch of people instead of talking to you directly. Everyone's the idiot here, but you more than anybody else. How long were you going to wait to tell him? Were you gonna go through the wedding and then be like surprise? Your bride came with a prize inside like, what the hell? Especially if he doesn't want a kid, he has a right to know before he marries you. He would still be responsible for the child if you decide to have it regardless of what he wants, of course, but he could still choose not to marry you if that's not the life he wants to live. And even if the wedding is still many months away, it's clear that your fiancé would not be happy about a kid yet you're not sure if you're keeping it or not? Shouldn't both of you be on the same page about something as freaking important as having kids or not? You are the idiot because of how long you left it. If she had run and told everyone the day after you took the test then that's different. But three weeks? What were you waiting for? For it to be too late to get an abortion so that he'd be forced to be okay with you keeping it? You took away any ability for him to have an input into a life-altering decision. That is not a good way to start a marriage. Also, I suspect there will be no wedding if you don't invite the SIL. I understand you are bitter for her telling people, but after three weeks what did you expect her to do? It's her brother for God's sake. I think most people in her situation would do the same. It's a bit of a complicated situation, I'm not sure whether I should speak up or not. My wife's brother and his wife have an 8 months old baby. He's been mostly fed with formula as my BIL's wife was unable to breastfeed due to health issues. 
My wife has always been criticizing them for giving up on natural milk and depriving their baby from the benefits of it by going with formula. They've had countless arguments about it and my wife and MIL still think they're in the right. The real problem was when I discovered that my wife's been breastfeeding their son, her nephew, whenever they drop him over before they go to doctor appointments or run tests. My wife and I have a 10 months old son but I didn't know she's been secretly breastfeeding her nephew till I walked in on her doing it. I confronted her about it and she said she was trying to give back to her nephew all the benefits his parents took away from him after they replaced breastfeeding with formula. I told her this was violating and that I would tell them immediately. She got mad and said I wouldn't dare. Matter of fact, she said that she's doing them a favor by feeding their son and trying to regain his strength and prevent future health issues due to lack of mother's milk. We yelled at each other and I told her again that I would tell them. She started begging me saying she's just trying to help and that she has her nephew's best interest at heart. She said if I tell them they won't ever let her see him so there's a lot at stake here. Your wife knows she's wrong. If she were right, she wouldn't be begging you not to tell. Not the idiot. And tell your wife and MIL that fed is best. Doesn't matter if it's breast milk or formula. As long as the child is being fed. Your SIL may also not be able to produce enough milk. I wanted so badly to EBF my son, but my production was lacking no matter my attempts at increasing it. So, he became formula fed. Your wife has majorly overstepped. You need to seriously tell your SIL. BIL, grab your kid and run. I have three kids, two formula fed, one breast. They're adults now. Not one is healthier than the other. This is absolutely irresponsible, reprehensible behavior. She has no right to do that to their child. Your wife has a superiority complex. They aren't denying the kid anything. I could understand if the child had a stomach issue, and your silk couldn't produce milk, and your wife donated it. I'd donate mine for preemies back in the day. But this is an absolute betrayal. Your wife is actually endangering your nephew. What if she ate something that he develops an allergy to because of her? How would you feel if your SIL did that to your child? Tell them. Now. Not the idiot and she's uninformed about breastfeeding benefits. The health issues matter involves colostrum which the mother only produces in the first few days. If your wife has breastfed your child for longer than that, the colostrum is long gone. The only other real benefits are closeness and connection. She should not be doing that with someone else's child. She has no right to criticize anyone for not breastfeeding. Not her baby, not her decision. Not the idiot. Tell your BIL immediately as this is totally out of line. If BIL and wife want a wet nurse, they can arrange that properly and with their full consent. It's not for your wife to decide.